If you are changing the size of the container, you'll click the width button up here so you can see how big your container is and you can change how big that is. And you'll pick three different sizes to test the pressure. If you're not going to do that, you can also try the heat. And you can see the temperature up here only changes if you've actually got particles in, in your tank. So right now it's at 300 Kelvin. You can also change that to degrees Celsius if you prefer. You can heat it up to increase the temperature. You can cool it down to decrease the temperature. And you'll just pick three different temperatures to choose. The last thing that you can do is you can check the number of particles. So I can do 50, 100, 200, 150, 200. You can increase the number of particles and see how that affects the pressure. So those are your options that you can test. But either way, no matter what you're doing, you're always testing what is the pressure after those, you've changed those things. For my gas experiment, I'm going to fill this out on page 12 in my STEM Fair notebook. I'm going to be testing the pressure of the gas. That's the thing I'm going to be measuring. So I'm going to measure the pressure of the gas. So make sure that that's on your table. The units of the pressure that we're using in this lab are atmospheres, and that is abbreviated ATM, different atmospheres. Now I'm going to be testing the number of particles. So I'm going to be trying it with 100 particles, 200 particles, and then I'm going to try 300 particles. So I'll go to the Fed Lab and I will choose which one to do. I'm going to go ahead and add 50 particles, 100 particles, and then I'm going to wait for that to equilibrialize. I'm going to wait for that to kind of equalize, and then I'm going to measure the pressure. Right now I'm seeing a pressure of 12, 11.3, 11.6, somewhere in there and I'm, it's looking like my average is right between is right around 11 like high 11 point something so maybe 11.8 so on my my chart here I'm going to put 11.8 because that's about about the average of my pressures and then I'm going to add 100 more particles and I'm going to allow that to equilibrialize and now that I'm looking at the pressure, it's going 23.2, 23.5, 23.1, 23 23.7, 23.9. I've got a 24 in there. So between 23 and 24 looks like where I'm at, kind of staying mostly in the mid 23 point area. So I'm going to call it 23.5. And I'm going to write down 23.5 with 200 particles. Then I'm going to add 100 more particles and let that give it a minute to become equal and then see my pressure. My pressure is now about 35, 34, 35. I'm seeing a 38, I'm seeing a 49. So right kind of like high 34, low 35. So I'm going to say that's probably about 35.3. So I'm going to write 35.3. And now I have finished one row for all of my tests. So now I'm going to do that again. I'm going to start over. I'm going to clear my testing area. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to test it with 100 particles, 200 particles, and 300 particles. And then when I'm done with that, I'll clear it and I will do it once again. And then I will total all of my 100 particle pressures, all of my 200, all of my 300, and find the average by dividing by three. Now, if you are doing a different variable besides number of particles, you'll do the same thing I did. You'll just change number of particles to whatever the variable is that you chose, and you'll fill out 